black of the sky, I just want you to listen to the sound of the Rolls-Royce-designed, Packard-built Merlin V12 liquid-cooled engine. This is the V51 Mustang. Tomcat was the real star of the show. Dale Snodgrass, coming in low. Watch him as he comes up. The airplane, his nose will come up and watch him go into a beautiful four-point hesitation roll, stopping the aircraft precisely every 90 degrees of roll. Dale Snodgrass has accrued over 4,800 hours in the F-14 Tomcat, more than any other person in the history of the aircraft. And since the F-14 Tomcat was retired right here at NAS Oceana on September 22nd of 2006, no one will ever have more hours in the Tomcat than Dale Snodgrass. Since he retired from the United States Navy in 1999, Dale Snodgrass, Captain Snodgrass, has been flying on the air show circuit. He'll fly anything that has a stick and a propeller or a jet, from P-51 Mustangs to T-6s. The F-4U Corsairs, F-5 Scotia Tigers, P-40 Warhawks, P-47 Thunderbolts, anything he can get his hands on. And I just wanted you to have a chance to hear the incredible sound of this Merlin engine. It is a liquid cooled engine. As I told you earlier, North American Aviation delivered the Mustang design for the Royal Air Force back in 1940. When the Royal Air Force wanted North Americans to build Curtis P-40 Warhawks under license, North American Aviation said, no, we'll build you something different. And they knew something about wing design that they had gotten from two different sources the National Advisory Council on Aeronautics, and also from a trip to Germany in 1938, before the beginning of World War II, they learned a little bit about something called laminar flow. And this is the way this There's the 
point hesitation rule. This laminar flow wing had a similar upper camber and lower camber or shape to the wing. Made it a very, very fast wing. And this is the wing design that went on that Mustang that was first produced for the Royal Air Mustang? Force for Great Britain in World War II. What? Originally, the first Mustang came with yeah. an Allison V12 liquid-cooled engine, the same engine that was what? in the P-40 Warhawk. But it didn't perform well enough at high altitude. So the British, I'm going to be quiet, let you listen again. I'll be prepared. How are you going to do that? I brought other stuff. So the British decided they would make a modification of the Mustang that they originally got. They took a Rolls-Royce Merlin B-12 engine that they were using in their Hurricanes and Spitfires, and also the Mosquito and the Lancaster Bomber, and they put it in frame that North American Aviation provided, and the Mustang was born. More B-12 Merlin engines were manufactured by the Packard Motor Car Company in New York than by Rolls-Royce. So here we have an American airframe with a British design engine manufactured in America, and this was known as the Cadillac of the Sky. Now, Dale Snodgrass is going to come and do a photo pass. This is the time to get your cameras ready, because my guess is he's going to come very low, drag his right wing very close to the ground. By the way, the airplane you see here is from Warbirds over Long Island, owned by Chris Baranaskis. Here comes a photo pass. Watch, watch Dale as he puts this wing down within about 10 feet of the ground. This one had some white and black stripes painted on it. Those were known as invasion stripes. They were painted on all Allied aircraft just prior to the D-Day invasion of Normandy, France on June 6th of 1944. It was done that way so that our guys on the ground, Allied forces on the ground, wouldn't shoot down our own aircraft. unique design characteristics of the engine. Not only is it a liquid-cooled engine, a small separation of a couple of inches from the top of the scoop where air can flow around it between the top of the scoop and the bottom of the fuselage. Again, they didn't know whether that was going to be a help or a hindrance. It turned out to be a help, and that same bit of aerodynamics has been applied to the F-16 Fighting Falcon. And if you get a chance to see an F-16 on display here, and I'm trying to see if we've got one out here, if you see that, you can actually see. Oh, it's on the Super Hornet as well. They have a little bit of, yeah, thanks, Griffin. They have a little bit of extra space there, but it's an aer aerodynamic plus for the aircraft. If you look at the Super Hornet uh, that's back there with the AJ on the tail, uh, you can see a little space between the top of the intake and the bottom of that wing. Landing right now, ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for United States Navy Captain Retired Dale Snort Snodgrass. This is your tech Dale's going to bring it in. By the way, let me tell you something else about Dale Snort Snodgrass. Some of you who are aviation enthusiasts may remember have, or may have seen a picture on the internet of an F-14 Tomcat going by the deck of a carrier in about 90 degrees of bank. And